Hi there! In this video we'll cover one of Shopware 6's most powerful features, the Flow Builder. What is the Flow Builder? The Flow Builder is a tool that allows for automating and customizing processes in your shop without programming knowledge. Based on triggers, or you could say events, you can determine the flow of procedures in your shop which follow after that event. Let's have a look at it. We can find the Flow Builder in the menu, Settings, Flow Builder. Here we can see a list of all the flows we built, both active and inactive ones. As we can see, we do not have a flow yet. That's about to change though, as we're going to create a new flow in a moment. It is worth mentioning that this tab here, Flow Templates, already comes with predetermined templates for flows you'd find commonly in most shops. We are going to build our flow for an order confirmation from scratch in this training, however. Let's go back to the overview and click on Add Flow. The following menu allows us to name the flow appropriately, in this case, order confirmation. We can also add a description, which is shown in the overview, to describe briefly what this flow does. It helps with organizing the flows, as you'll most likely end up with a lot of them in a fully fledged store. This sends an order confirmation. A description should also greatly help other people, for example your employees, understand what the individual flows do. This field, Priority, comes into play when you have multiple flows for the same trigger. It tells Shopware the order in which to execute flows. Priority 10, for example, would be executed before a flow with Priority 2. Finally, like in many other menus within Shopware 6, we have the Active or Inactive switch. We'll set our flow to Active, as we want to use it straight away after building it. Now that we got the general information covered, Let's switch to the Flow tab. First off, we have to select a trigger. Which trigger should lead to the follow-up events we're about to define? As we're building a flow for an order confirmation, we want the trigger Order Placed. That trigger is located under Checkout, Order Placed. So let's select that. Before we continue, I feel it is worth mentioning that this might seem a little complicated at first. The more you work with the Flow Builder, however, the more the order of triggers is going to make sense. There are many triggers in the list allowing you to customize huge parts of your shop's behavior to your individual requirements and preferences. Continuing with our order confirmation flow, now that we've set the trigger, we can add conditions or actions to the flow. You might already be familiar with conditions as this is very similar to the rule builder structure. Here, we could select from a list of pre-existing conditions or even create our own with the Rule Builder. We want our order confirmation flow to apply to every order placed though, so we'll go with Always Valid. Shopware adds the appropriate events now. What happens when the conditions are met, so the outcome is true, as well as what happens if the condition's outcome is false. We could add further conditions here, but our flow's logic is already complete. Hence, we'll add an action instead of another condition. We'll get a drop-down menu of actions which can be assigned when our condition is met. Our goal is to send an order confirmation and send email is exactly what we want in this case. Depending on the action you choose, you get more options as to how to execute that action. The options selected by default are fitting though. I could determine a reply to address here and select who the recipient of the mail will be. In our case, it's the customer, so we can leave this setting the way it is. Next up, we'll have to select the mail template. Those are configured in settings, email templates. We already have an order confirmation template in place though, so we'll go with that one. Finally, we could also attach documents to the mail, for example, an invoice. We don't need this, however, so we leave it and click on Act Action to complete it. There is also a flow governing what happens if our condition is not met, when its outcome is false. As our condition is quite literally always valid, false will be most unlikely to ever happen. It is still a good practice, if nothing else for making a flow tidy, to tie up loose ends by telling Shopware to stop the flow when we want nothing to happen once a condition, true or false, is met. So we'll stop our flow at this point, if the condition is not met. Once we click on Save, we have successfully configured a flow, which sends an order confirmation whenever an order is placed. 
I encourage you to spend some time experimenting with the Flow Builder and its triggers, conditions and actions. It is a very important part of Shopware 6, one of its main strengths and really allows you to get creative. Even if you have quite specific processes in your shop, you can usually automate at least parts of them by using the Flow Builder in imaginative ways.